can't. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to write a new science book. It's all about Professor Albert Grumblestein and his quest to make a new human brain using stardust. Well, actually, Zahn, there are scientists right here on Earth who are already making human brains in labs. It's not the future, it's happening now. Where do they get their stardust from? They're not using stardust, Zahn, they're using stem cells. Time for investigation. Ouch. This is a fake brain but we're going to show you a real human brain. Look away now if you're squeamish. Your brain is packed with a hundred billion cells called neurons. They control pretty much everything you do. The brain is such a complex organ that if something goes wrong with it, either through injury or disease, it can be very hard to fix. This is Professor Rafalov. He is exploring and developing the cutting edge technology needed to grow a human brain. But Professor Rafalov isn't looking to grow a whole brain just yet. He's investigating growing small pieces first. So the human brain is the most complicated thing we know about. Where do you even start? We need to start from stem cells. Every cell in your body begins life as a stem cell. They are like blank cells waiting to be given a job to do, whether they become hair cells, blood cells or brain cells. <laughs> Professor Rafalov has already turned these stem cells into neurons, but in order to develop them into a brain, they require a 3D support. This is a 3D nano printer. Nano means very, 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 very small. This printer can print things that are 100,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. And that is pretty small. Now, what is it printing at the moment? It's a printing now 3D scaffolds for neurons to live on. This 3D scaffold is basically a frame to support the neurons and help them divide and grow. But where is it? Because I can't see anything. It is it's very small. It's just a size that's below one millimeter. You know, even if I get in really close, I cannot see what's going on. So in order to understand this brain scaffolding, we're going to have to supersize it. This is a very simple scaffolding design, similar to the one that Professor Rafaloff is using. But mine is a lot bigger. OK, and print. To show you how a neuron scaffold works, I'm using this normal 3D printer. Ten hours later, and it's cooked. My supersized scaffold is ready for some brain cells, and I have some here in this aerosol can. In fact, this is expanding foam, but it represents brain cells. You can see the foam filling the spaces between the scaffold, and this is what the brain cells would be doing on Professor Rafaloff's nano version. And now the neurons can grow and connect to each other in three dimensions, just like they would in a real brain. Although I must admit, I didn't know growing a brain was going to be such a messy business. This is my version. So how much smaller is your scaffold than mine? I, I would say it's a million times smaller than what you build. You can fit a million of yours into one of mine. Yes. Professor Rafalov's may be a million times smaller, but we can take a closer look through a microscope to see how neurons develop. Now we have neurons growing on a scaffold. On a scaffold, yes. And why are they flashing? Flashing show us that neurons start to connect to each other. They just start to talk to each other. So these neurons, they're already forming a brain-like circuit. Yes. Wow! Essentially, what you've made here is the first step toward building a human brain. Yes. Can you believe that in the future, if you were to damage your brain, they might be able to mend it with something that was printed in a lab?